Oh, with that soundtrack and the engine bin at the back, you can pretend you're in a baby Porsche. In this video, it is one of my favorite modern cars. This is from 2016. This is brand new by Hubnut standards, but this car fascinates me. It is the Smart 4.4. It is built in Slovenia alongside the Renault Twingo, which is exactly the same. It is rear-engined. It has a ridiculous amount of steering lock. And importantly, this Smart has a five-speed manual gearbox. Perfect. But what's it actually like to drive? Let's have a look around. So weirdly, we're going to start with the engine, which of course is not here at the front. You've got to come around to the back of the car where I can talk about practicality. Obviously, we've got a very high loading point, but there is room for a small dog, thankfully, uh, in the back if you fold one of the rear seats down. One of the silly things is this is your spare tire. Uh, it's an inflator and some goo. There is nowhere in the car for this to go, apparently. They haven't put a little net in or anything to just hold that in place. So this just floats around in the boot, um, convenient. And of course, the engine itself is not all that convenient to get at. You've got to lift this mat, which it feels very warm on the underside, nice and cool on top, so you're not going to melt your shopping. And then I've got to undo six very, very slow screw connectors. So rest assured that when your car goes in for service, the uh, bill for labour might be quite long, and most of it is just getting this out. So a fun fact for you while I'm still doing this is that the 4.4 is built, as I mentioned, alongside the Twingo in Slovenia. And uh, the 4.2 which is also on this same platform, is built at Smartville in France, which uh, is now owned by Ineos. So Ineos building the Grenadier 4x4 are now building Smarts for Smarts because Daimler-Benz sold the factory. It's a weird old world sometimes. Uh, see if I can find something to get a grip on this. And there we go. Oh, that's warm. This is the tiny little Mercedes-Benz developed three cylinder engine, completely new generation of engines, twin cam, um, 12 valves, so four per cylinder, got a tiny little fan to blow air out of the engine bay. But you can see one of the downsides of this engine layout, it gets a lot of muck because it's behind um, so many of the wheels, unlike a front engine. But uh, I put, just find it fascinating that they thought this was the solution. I don't think it compromises the load area as much as you might expect. Rear engine cars of old, especially Renaults, uh, the 50s and 60s, uh, the entire back end was devoted to power plants. So that's been packaged in quite nicely. It's a one litre engine and uh, all of about 76 brake horsepower, apparently. So uh, not that fearsome, but you could get a turbo version. And this engine, even though it's a Mercedes-Benz engine, because it was used in the Renault Twingo, was then also used in other Renaults and Nissans. So it's used in the Nissan Micra. It's used in the Dacia Sandero. So there's some good news. Uh, and again, in turbo form, I believe, in the uh, Dacia. And uh, I'll, I'll ping the power up about here somewhere, because I've entirely forgotten what the turbo ones make. But it's known as the 0.9 TCE in those applications. A slightly smaller capacity, but a turbo for a bit more pep. Well, we've got the rear door open to hopefully stop the dog from cooking. There is a front panel here, and it's a most peculiar thing, because it just sort of lifts off like that, but is then tethered. So that's as much access as you get. But if you come in for a look over the top, uh, this is where you find the battery, um, coolant presumably, uh, screen wash, brake fluid, and the wiper motor. All right, the dog's already panting, so I'm gonna start the engine to get the aircon running. There it is, quiet little three-cylinder engine thrumming away at the back. I'll put the aircon on, Diego, it's gonna be all right. Uh, you can hear the fans are quite powerful, and uh, lovely cold air comes out of these big old vents, and you can turn them around to get a slightly different angle and blow the air. A bit more towards the cooking dog in the rear of the car. Little LCD display here, uh, which has got various things and music. Apparently we don't want the music, thank you. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that, that's for geeky people. This is the aircon, quite fun. Got different temperature settings for your uh, slider. I like that, it's a nice little touch. We're currently in auto. Probably turn the fan down a bit, there we go. Uh, electric power steering. Uh, which makes life a lot more simple when the engine is nowhere near the steered wheels. This fun little pod, just like the original Smart, up here with a rev counter and a clock. 
Oh, I do like that, good noise. But uh, this all feels very, very smart in here. And there's some interesting textures. I quite like this material on here. Uh, Miss Hubnut loves the plastic on the door cards. No, it's the repetition of this. Oh, the repetition of the pattern. Yeah, the sort of nut-like pattern. There. It's all over the place. Yeah, and uh, there is storage in odd places. There is a glove box. It is one of the smallest glove boxes I've ever seen. Uh, we've got storage here as well. Look, storage drawers. It sort of comes out both sides, he said. But that one doesn't want to come out. I think it's just that side. Passenger only. Cup holders, two of there. Another one here in the back. There's more in the back. We'll get to that in a moment. USB point. That was like a memory card slot. Headphone socket. A 12 volt power outlet. But uh, yeah, most importantly, the five speed manual gearbox. Uh, thankfully a nice light clutch, so quite easy to drive around town. Uh, we'll do a hazard warning, so I'm just going to turn that down even more. A very electronic noise, but um, quite pleasant nonetheless. And while we're here with the engine running, we might as well do the windscreen wiper test. So here we go. Oh, and it's bad news. Bad, bad news. This must be Renault's influence. Look, we've got a mighty triangle of doom there. So while Mercedes-Benz did the engine, perhaps Renault did the wipers. Renaults tend to have, be very bad for this triangle of doom. I'm very pleased we haven't got a dribble of disappointment. It's probably because it's got those nice misting jets. I quite like that. Uh, for fans of windows, there are windows in the roof as well uh, that they uh, don't open. So it's a good job we've got the air con, but there is a blind so you can um, tone things down a bit if you think I've broken it. Go me. That lives there now. Uh, electric mirror switch quite randomly here on the door. But I suppose it isn't too far away from the uh, mirror. Let your window speed. Not too bad. Good mirrors as well. They're really chunky if you have a look at the mirror on your side. Uh, it's a good old chunky size. And they're saving money for... Uh, uh, they've just got a blanking plug where the mirror switch would be normally. But yeah, really nice um, driving position. For a modern car, the head restraint doesn't seem too thrust into my head which i actually quite like good range of adjustment plenty of room for my long legs so uh, up front it's certainly delivering let's see how the back compares we've had to send a small dog away for he was much balky but uh, rear seats let, let's demonstrate something first of all can i fit in let's find out oh oh no 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 this is this is compact uh, i'm not at all comfortable i've got the head restraint in my back isn't helping can i push that up yeah, but now my head's on the roof. So my head's on the roof, my legs are fully in the back of the seat in front. Uh, I'm going to say, even though it says Smart 4.4, this is not feeling very smart. And if I close the window, I'm sure it feels even more claustrophobic. That is unpleasant. But if you've got a family and only small kids, uh, it might well work for you. Uh, I want to demonstrate some other features while we're here. Uh, the seat itself flips up. Look at this mechanism. Isn't that beautiful? That's lovely. And then with the head restraint back down again, uh, I can pull this tab and drop the seat back down. We've got a flattish load area. You've got this difficult area here, but I've no idea what's going on with that fit. It's apparently no exhaust. Um, we've got a pretty decent flat area in the back, so it does make it more practical. Between the seats, we've got this handy device. Cup holders galore everywhere, but a maximum of one kilogram. Don't get too carried away. That's really nice. If you decide it isn't nice, you can just remove it. Again, one of these jobs that's not so easy to do one-handed. But then you've got mobile cup holders. How good is that? If you want to boost practicality even more, you can actually fold the front seats down quite easily. Um, I'm not sure there's much point in folding the driver's seat down. Um, it's going to make driving very difficult, but there's definitely not enough room to sleep in it. But still, you know, fairly useful. And we've got pockets on the back of the seats as well. So yeah, it's trying to be very practical for a little car. All right, my mullet waggling in the breeze. Uh, the aircon will quieten down. Uh, we shall get moving. So yeah, nice positive uh, gearbox. Uh, we're gonna test it immediately over a speed hump. Doors lock. Oh, yeah, not bad. The back feels softer than the front. But I suppose the back is where all the weight is. But so far on the short drive we've done, you, you'd struggle to tell it's rear-engined, in all honesty. It just feels like a, a fairly modern car. Uh, the steering is um, 
a bit horribly light at these speeds, so standard. We've got the usual sort of slightly shuddery three cylinder engine, but uh, yeah, I, I think it um, drives very nicely so far. So we'll go and stretch its legs a bit more and see how it copes in um, other kinds of driving. Oh, I haven't demonstrated the amazing turning circle. I'd need to do that. Do stay tuned. We will demonstrate the amazing turning circle. A supermarket car park really would have been the best place to do that. But we are currently following an Itrio C1. So uh, there's a kind of a rival. But yeah, in many ways, this is the smart I'd always dreamed of. Uh, it has a proper gearbox and uh, it's still got lots of character that makes it very very different and it's still quite flawed in an awful lot of ways uh, there are some things that just don't seem to have been very well fought through but nonetheless the driving experience is quite nice and because it's a longer wheelbase this is like a smart limousine uh, the ride is less choppy there goes a nice first generation smart so yeah i think actually the ride is pretty good so this generation was uh, a joint development, pretty much 50-50 between Renault and Mercedes-Benz, uh, even if Mercedes-Benz did the engine and Renault the wipers. And uh, the factory is Renault's in Slovenia. And the Twingo is still in production with uh, combustion or electric drive options, but the 4.4 has been dropped. Let's pay attention on this roundabout. And uh, the 4.4 the has kind of been replaced by the number one, the weird little SUV that is an awful lot more expensive. So they phased out the petrol engine version to these. They were introduced in 2013. The petrol engine versions were phased out in 2017, I think, or possibly 2019. And then the uh, electric version lived on to 2021. Pay attention on these busy roads, but that's good. Good mirrors, good visibility, especially for a modern car. There's quite a lot of depth to the side window. And even though this isn't the most powerful engine, it's still a decent march on. You think our uh, one litre Sherrard is 60 brake horsepower, I think? 50 or 60? 50. 50, sorry, I'm, I am corrected. 50 brake horsepower, and this is 76. And of course the turboed ones give even more from slightly less. An interesting aside, Renault is well known for its rear engine cars. It built an awful lot of them, millions of them from the 40s right through to the 1970s. But actually, Mercedes-Benz does have some rear engine cars in its history. In the 1930s, they built their own little, sort of slightly Beetle-esque rear engine car. Not a great success, but nonetheless, both companies have been there before. Just to um, confirm the story for those who uh, might not be aware, uh, the uh, original smart car was a joint development between Mercedes-Benz and uh, Swatch watches. Swatch watches quickly got cold feet of the whole thing, possibly when they realised it was going to be a complete financial disaster, leaving Mercedes-Benz to cop the bill. Um, but the next generation, or the, rather the first generation 4.4, was built at the Ned Car fa factory in the Netherlands and was really a Mitsubishi Colt, uh, just mildly rebodied. Not a massive success, only sold in the UK for a couple of years. And then there was, I think, an eight-year hiatus before this second generation of the 4.4 um, came into being. And according to information I found online, I think they've built something like 238,000 of these smart 4.4s, which isn't a terribly large amount by modern car standards, but hopefully a, a little more profitable than the original smart. Oh, with that soundtrack and the engine bin at the back, you can pretend you're in a baby Porsche. I don't know we're 0-60 test yet, but we might be able to do 0-50. to Hold on, Diego. We, we, we may not be able to push the handling too far on this trip because we'll lose the dog. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's um, sluggish. I said that, that's our 50 in second. And I think that's the problem. It's not really very sparky. I think it's got very tall gearing. I'm gonna go third to fifth now at 50 miles an hour. That's brought our revs down to just a touch over 2000. So yeah, very long legged for a tiny little engine. I think that's one of the other things that's changed. 
I mean, our Daihatsu is a bit the same. Very, very good torque characteristics. So despite being a tiny engine, you can actually run it at fairly low revs, which is good for economy, and it just makes the thing a whole lot more refined at speed, which you've, you've got to drive on motorways, which a lot of people do, is a good thing. But it does mean, yeah, it's not the sparkiest around town. The brakes are fearsome. Even though they're disc drum, you may have seen the slightly rusty rear drums. That's a slightly unfortunate thing. They would have started a nice painted silver, but obviously not painted all that well. And they, they have gone rusty. That is something that happens, apparently. And this one lives near the sea, which can't help. But, yeah, generally, I, I'm liking this. This is little cars done right. But the reason for them wanting to go rear-engined is so they haven't got the difficulty of um, making drive shafts make tight turns. Actually, our Daihatsu Sharad is very good at tight turns, but uh, this should be a little bit better. So there are lots of traffic lights around here. We're in lovely Barry, where we are resisting the temptation to go to good sheds today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're at the speed limit in second. Oh, she doesn't like the hills though, back to fourth. Yeah, that's a mild frustration I have with the Sherrard as well is the gearing just seems a little bit too tall. So you do get the relaxation, but it does mean you are going to be down changing on hills. Yeah, in terms of the overall feel of the thing, you've no idea where the engine is, to be honest. Whereas rear engine cars of old, especially those Renaults with the swing axles, could be a proper handful in the wet. <laughs> down change again, find the power. It's there somewhere, there's not much of it, but Make the little engine work. One more thing I should mention is the Renault Twingo is a very rare sight in the UK. Uh, still sold elsewhere in Europe, but in um, 2018 they managed to sell about 870 of them, which is rubbish. So they gave up and withdrew the Twingo from right-hand drive markets. So if you want to right-hand drive one of these, you're far better seeking out the smart. I believe you could get some properly spicy Twingos and uh, I have to say the idea of this platform being a bit spicier is quite intriguing even for someone whose motto is power less is more. Right let's get the little car wound up on this handy dual carriageway. Gravity is helping us get up to 70 miles an hour. So a bit of road noise but we are on a concrete surface so it will be naturally louder whatever you're in but certainly not an awful lot of um, road noise a bit of wind noise around these enormous door mirrors just coming up to a short bit of tarmac so await the um, noise transition here just a little bit of noise perhaps but not bad and you know it is a little city car really it just shows how far city cars have come really my day um it is Bit of a nightmare on a long journey. So this example is quite well specced. We've got the um, aircon, we've got the leather seats, we've even got cruise control operated by this little rocker switch here. Uh, you can also use it as a limiter, um, fairly common on modern cars. But again, I like a bit of luxury in a small package, so uh, I am all for that. And it seems to be working well. Look, no feet. So things I don't like so much. I'm finding this centre console is a bit too close to my leg for comfort, so my leg is resting on it. It's not a very nice thing to rest your leg on. Uh, the handbrake feels very cheap, but it at least gives it smart heritage, because smarts have always had cheap, nasty, horrible handbrakes. And uh, that's probably about it, to be honest. The head restraint is bothering me a little, but again, that's a very modern car thing. For crash safety standards, the head restraint tends to be very close to the back of your head. Um, but otherwise, I'm finding this a very pleasant drive indeed. And there you go, as turning circles go, mightily impressive. What a fun little car. So yeah, I've enjoyed this a lot. I've been wanting to get my hands on one of these or the Twingo equivalent for a while. So huge thanks to Adam for making my dreams come true. But yeah, I like it a lot. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in a future video. Bye.
now we've got to try and get this back on again, which is a bit of an art, apparently. They didn't think all aspects of this car through, I'm going to say. There we go, I think we're getting there. Make sure these are out, yes. <laughs> what, what, what a pain. Why couldn't they just fit a little bonnet at the front? There we go. It's all good. <laughs> 